So the, um, as I was saying before my battery ran out, the next uh, item on the uh, menu system here is uh, position, which relates to whether the stereo pan from left to right or from right to left uh, is from the point of view of the player on the kit, the, the drummer, in other words, from his, his or her right, uh, left to right, or with a twist of the jog wheel, uh, the listener, as in as you're facing the kit, if it were on stage, for example, as you're looking at the kit, whether it's uh, from your left to your right. So that's, uh, that affects the stereo, where you, where you um, experience the stereo spread in relation to the kit and, and where you might be positioned. And then finally, memory, that gives you how much available memory is left in the patterns uh, for you to add your own patterns. And as you can see, even with uh, nearly 500 patterns already in, and I haven't put any of my own in, uh, there's still 41% of the memory left, so you've loads there for uh, uh, any patterns you may wish to create. And then we're back to the top. Okay, I'm going to uh, show you uh, now an alternative method of recording uh, rhythms into the track sequence. So we've already looked at real time input where we held down record and then hit play, and then we were able to. Um, uh, enter uh, whatever we'd assign to these tracks by pressing the pads we were able to record them into the track sequencer uh, in the order that we want them to appear when we play back the finished project but the other way of recording stuff into the track sequencer is by means of step input and I'm going to show you how to do that now so at the minute we're on the first beat, uh, the, f the first uh, pattern rather of those that are built into the R24. I'm going to scroll backwards all the way down to the first empty um, pattern, which on my settings here is 473, and it actually says next to it empty. So we're back to this grid view of the sequencer, and um, the uh, <laughs> Don't get confused between this and the actual track sequencer. This is actually a grid showing the uh, drum pattern rather than the sequencer. So we, if you remember in the intro, I was trying to explain how the, the principle or, or uh, the concept of building your bricks first, making your bricks first, and then building your wall out of those bricks. Well, the, the building of the wall is the track sequencer where we line up all the bricks or all the rhythm patterns in the order that we want them to make the entire sort of rhythm uh, backing track. Uh, but at the minute we're just looking at the sort of the brick view. So we're looking at how to build an individual pattern before we then assemble those patterns into a, a, a rhythm, so a rhythm, you know, backing track. So at the moment we're looking at something that looks a bit like the track sequencer, but it isn't. It's uh, the, the rhythm grid, or I don't know what, what Zoom call it actually, but it's um, the rhythm pattern editor anyway. And now instead of uh, tracks down the left hand side, um, we've got um, rhythm sounds and this should go up to 16 and I'll show you why in a moment so we're all the way down to yeah 16 and we can't go any more if you remember when we we're looking at the track sequencer that went all the way down to 24 one for each track um, now we've got 16 and the reason for that is that there are two banks of drum sounds available on these pads so first of all with bank one selected tracks one to eight we're using um, uh, the first eight pads and they're actually nicely labeled kick snare closed hat open hat crash etc um, uh, ride tom one tom two and that's on bank one if we flick to bank two we then have a load of what that so the first bank is what i would call sort of drum sounds um sort of um, fairly conventional drum sounds and then the um, the next eight tracks, the next bank of eight uh, pads, sorry, uh, are more what you call percussion sounds, like sort of hand claps and, and triangles and things like that. And what we can do by using a combination of the bank switches here to select one to eight or nine to 16 on the pad sounds, uh, a combination of them and these pads and this grid, we can now input rhythm patterns uh, one beat at a time and one sound at a time and then play them back and see what they sound like. So we know, for example, that, um, let me turn this up a bit. We know, for example, that uh, this pad here is a kick drum. 
Okay, this is a snare. Uh, closed hat, open hat, crash, ride, tom one, tom two. Okay, next bang is, I don't know what these are, I'm just getting, oh, it doesn't actually say so. Sort of a wooden block, cowbell, never have enough cowbell as you all know. Um, sort of some kind of hi hat sound anyway. A louder, sort of, a, what's that, like a maraca type thing, is it? Congas. And we can change the kit, don't forget, with the use of the kit button here and listen to probably a, a whole range of different sounds. As I said at the beginning, I don't tend to use this much, so I'd, I've not experimented with it a great deal. Um, and what we can now do is using either uh, the pads or the arrows and the enter key in the middle or both if you want we can start inputting sounds and I'll show you how that works so if you can imagine uh, on here now the um, let's go back one step let's go into the rhythm menu let's go into edit and let's go into um, bar length we'll leave that at two we'll leave the time signature at, at four we'll put the pad roll we'll leave that on 16th note so that's actually set up quite well as, as we want to as we want to do it and the grid now is empty and it's this empty pattern here. So I know that the top line of this grid relates to pad number one. And I know that pad number one is a kick drum sound. So I'm on the first uh, measure of the song and you can move around in the usual way. You can, you can press uh, forward to move forward in big steps. You can press the arrow keys to move forward in whatever quantized settings you have in here. Uh, so we're in 16th notes, so each each square represents a 16th note. Um, or we can move forward in blocks of 16th notes, so that's uh, one, two, three, four. Yeah, we're moving forward in blocks of four there with these keys. Um, and we can move up and down. So if we stay on, oops, if we see the little red, uh, the little, not red dot, the little dots flashing now. Uh, I know the top line relates to um, uh, line number one or row I guess it is number one relates to a kick drum so we can either position the cursor where we want uh, it's flashing away so position it where we want hit enter and it will lay down one kick drum beat in that square uh, I think I oh, no, no sorry beg your pardon uh, before, we, before we can input data into the grid, we need to press the record button. So unlike before where we held down record and hit play, on this one we just hit record. And that, that then puts us in a kind of a, uh, an edit mode where we can actually input data onto the grid. So now if I try and put a, where it's flashing, the cursor's flashing, enter a kick drum sound. Okay, that's laid down one. And if I move along, one, two, you can put a little dot now in that square. Uh, I can move another one here. Okay. Or I can just hit this. Okay. Um, now that's actually made a quieter, I've noticed, that's actually made a quieter kick drum sound than the other two. And the reason for that is because I have the pad sensitivity set a certain way. Um, you can have the pad set that, for example, no matter how hard or softly you touch them, it gives a consistent sound. And that can, sound can be low, medium, or high volume. Or we can have the pad set to depending on how hard you hit it uh, will affect the volume directly so you can set that up in the menu settings I'll maybe show you how to do that at the end if there's uh, if there's time um, but I just noticed that the enter button's giving us a consistently loud kick sound whereas the, the pads are currently set that if I only uh, press them lightly it gives a lower volume uh, kick sound okay so I want to get rid of that lower volume one I've just put in uh, I want to keep them consistently loud so I'm going to put my cursor on it it's flashing now and I'm going to hit the delete key and it's now gone okay so it's easy as that you can step through this which is why it's called step input mode and just when you get to a sound if you don't want it just hit delete there and it's gone okay to put it back hit enter now if I want a different sound in between those kick sounds I'll move down to whatever sound I want so number two is the snare uh, so I'll move down to row two and I'll put a snare in, say, there, and there, and there, and there, and then we'll put a kick in 
there, okay? So let's audition that and see what it sounds like and just hit play. Uh, sorry, hit stop first of all to exit this record mode, hit stop and then hit play. And it's got loads of blank space at the end because in the settings we set that pattern to be two measures long and at the minute we've only filled up really about a measure. Uh, so we've got a, a whole bar there at the end that's lying empty at the moment. So we could adjust that in the edit menu here. We could bring it down bar length. We could have it just one measure. Uh, sorry. Uh, let me do that. Oh, God, oh, God. Anyway, forget that. But that, that's why um, uh, he, uh, I'm, not, I'm not actually quite sure how you do that, but it's, it'd be in the edit menu. Uh, you can adjust the, the bar length. So if we, if we hit play again, Okay, and then when we're happy with that, um, we can, um, we're, we're not in record mode anymore, uh, we can go back into record mode and, and add, I don't know, add something else, uh, let's have a look, what else do we have, let's add a few toms, uh, oh, that's a symbol, we'll exit that by pressing stop, hit play, uh, I'll go to the beginning again quickly as in the normal way, hold down stop, hit rewind, hit play. Okay, <coughs> so that's building a basic drum pattern and then we can assign that in the usual way by holding down the assign key and pressing a pad. It'll only light up the ones that are available, that are empty, that are uh, uh, able to have a pattern assigned to them. And then we can then go into the track sequencer and as you already know, line up those, all those patterns that we've created into a, you know, we could have a few fills, a few intros, a few outros, uh, the steady rhythm throughout the song. We could build that and, uh, in the track sequencer, uh, go into bounce mode and bounce the entire rhythm track down to a stereo pair of tracks. And then that will behave then as if we'd had a real drummer in the room and we were, um, we'd recorded him to a stereo, him or her to a stereo uh, pair of tracks. <coughs> Excuse me, so we can use that audio then. Uh, in any way we like in our wider project with other instruments. So that's step input mode. Um, you can also just be aware, use a combination of step input mode and of uh, real time record mode. So for step, step input mode, just hit record. That's just in step input mode and move around with the arrows. For uh, real time input mode, let's go back to the beginning. Uh, hold down record and then hit play and it says, it says here now recording and we can play the pads and add some beats in to our rhythm. Okay, so now via a combination of step input which is how I started this pattern and I ended it with real-time record input mode. We've now got a pattern that's including crash and toms that I've just added in. Uh, and we can go back to the beginning and play that through and you can hopefully hear the difference. Okay, so you get the general idea. That is um, step uh, input mode. Uh, on the on the rhythm pattern edit window, whatever they call that that sort of grid, and you can change the kit. As you know, we can go down to uh, try a techno kit because uh, you'll notice a bigger difference that way. I'll try that and then play. You can see it's very versatile. You can change kits even with your own rhythm patterns. You can rename uh, that pattern if you want. It'll go into the edit menu into rename. It's currently called Pat 473, default name Pattern 473. And we can, um, you know, we can uh, uh, change that to a, a more meaningful uh, rhythm pattern name. You can then import that. When you're in another blank project or another project you're halfway through, you can then import that rhythm pattern that you made into that project using the menu settings I showed you earlier. So I'll exit out of that. Um, now the pad roll, 
Uh, I'll show you that. That it's at the minute set to sixteenth notes, and in real time input mode, if we exit out of that. Um, I'll hold down this repeat button here, and then maybe the closed hi hat sound. And depending on what what I've got the roll, uh, uh, the pad roll setting set to, will determine how quickly the uh, the hi hat. Uh, or whatever pad I have selected uh, um, sounds. So if I add it to 30 second notes, it would go even quicker. If I add it to quarter notes, it would just one, two, three, four. It's set to sixteenths at the minute. It just saves you having to keep pressing it like that. Set the pad roll uh, to whatever you want. Hold this repeat button down when you select the pad and it will just keep playing over and over again. So let's try that in real time input mode. And uh, we'll go back to the beginning. Uh, Hold down record and press play. Now recording. So you can hear what I've done there is I've had added in rather a 16th note closed hi hat throughout the whole duration of the thing, and you can see it on the grid. You can see it's uh, um, rhythm sound number three, which corresponds to pad number three, which is a closed hat, and there's just a dot on every measure, on, on every uh, on every beat. Sorry, not every measure. Now, let's imagine we don't want that. After all, we want to get rid of it. Uh, again, dead easy to do. Go into real time uh, edit mode or step edit mode. It doesn't matter which. Uh, and in real time edit mode, in step edit mode, you have to really you know d delete them one at a time and work through with your steps. But in uh, real-time uh, record mode, you can simply hold down the delete key, which isn't showing at the minute because we're not we're not in uh, the record mode. You can hold down the delete key, hold down. If you press the pad once, it will delete one of the beats. If you keep it held down, as as the thing scans through the rhythm pattern, it will just wipe whatever it is you, you're uh, you're holding down. So let's let's have a look at that. Let's go into real time mode again with uh, hold down record and press play. No, sorry, let's um, let's go back to the beginning first. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold down the delete key and I'm going to get rid of that sixteenth note hi hat that I just put in by holding it down whilst the delete key is held as well. Okay, so let's enter edit mode. There's delete. And now that's gone and you can see it's wiped off the grid and you can actually hear it wasn't sounding anymore uh, so that's a sort of quick and easy way to um, you know to get rid of uh, something that you've put in inadvertently or that's no longer required or you can go into step input mode and and, and move the cursor around and hit delete one sort of beat at a time uh, and do it that way then when you're done assign your fancy new rhythm pattern to whichever track you want uh, and use it to build up your rhythm track along with loops and other things that you've you've done. So while we're on the subject of loops, let's have a look in the track menu over here. Um, let's imagine I recorded uh, a bass uh, riff uh, and I wanted to build that into my uh, song. I'm not sure what's on track one at the moment. It should just be the guitar part. So let's come out of that and just double check. Uh, I'll just have that playing. Not have any of these playing banks to you. Uh, so just look at bank one, uh, track one should be just the guitar part. These are lit because they all have rhythms assigned to them, but you're not hearing anything because I've turned them off here. It's just letting me know that these have got rhythms assigned. Okay. There's the vocal, if you remember. Right, so we know we've got a guitar part here. Now let's imagine, just for the sake of this example, that's just a quick two bar guitar phrase rather than a whole song uh, that is on that track at the minute. Um, so we've got standard wave audio recorded to uh, to this. It's a, uh, an acoustic guitar. Let's go back to the beginning. Let's look in the track menu. Make sure we're looking at track one. We know we are because it's lit up orange and we know uh, we are because it's confirmed here at the top of the screen. It's telling us the take that's currently assigned to track one is an audio file and it's called mono000.wav, which is the default name for the first uh, recording in your project. Loop at the minute is set to off, okay? But I can set that to uh, on and I can go into the 
um, I, I can go go in instead of just turning it on or off. I can also go into it by pressing enter and I can access some more loop setting features. So loop loops on at the moment. If it were off, we wouldn't be able to see any other menu items. But when we flick it on with the jog wheel, we can see here that at the moment, the position it begins, our loop begins is uh, uh, bar one, beat one. So in other words, the top of the, the top of the project. And it goes on for um, the length that's set there. So uh, we can, if we if we um, if we hit enter on either the position, in other words, where the loop starts uh, and ends, and the length, in other words, whether it's for one bar or two bars or four bars or whatever. And I said at the beginning of this, remember, pretend this is just a, a bass riff. It's a two-bar bass riff rather than an entire acoustic guitar part. We can go into if, if we click on any of those two, it takes us into a waveform view that we can then trim and move and put it exactly where we want and have it play for as long as we want the exact precise amount of time that we want so i'll show you that now we're going in we're in the waveform view okay uh, soft keys become position length and zoom and if we hit zoom and use it we're at one time zoom at the moment if we use the jog wheel you can see what's happening there on the screen maybe but have a go with this yourself if you can't see it um, that's a five times zoom. It's just allowing us, nothing's getting louder or quieter as you might think, but it's just zooming in on the waveform and making the, the spikes and the troughs, the peaks and the troughs, uh, more pronounced so it's easier to, to, um, to, to work with, okay? And across the top of your bars, one, two, three, four bars at the moment. Um, now, uh, so that's, I've selected zoom, and that's the tab that we're on at the moment. That makes the jog wheel function as a, as a zoom uh, control okay um, if I flip to the tab called posi or in other words position uh, I can using the um, jog wheel now decide what bar we uh, we start on and it this is all linked in with your quantized settings so if you've got this to 16th or whatever you can come across to here and, and fine-tune it even more or come across to here and fine-tune it really down to real fine detail which is absolutely superb really um, so that's the position so at the minute we're starting in uh, at the top of bar two beat one and bar two um, and we're going to go on for if we select the length we're going to go on for this is 123 bars long at the moment so let's imagine we just go down to say two bars you can see my song look Oh no, let's, let's go back a bit quicker. Uh, yeah, that's better. Go back in bigger chunks, right, okay. Okay, so let's go, let's go say, um, let's go four bars. Four bars, okay. So now we're starting at, uh, where are we starting? At uh, bar two, uh, that's the position. And the length of that is going to be four bars long and that's our loop so we've taken an entire acoustic guitar track and we've chopped it down to just a section that we can then loop over and over again it's going to sound awful isn't it but uh, you get the idea and if that were a bass part or a sample if you've sampled your dog barking or whatever it might be you can then um, you know using the microphones then you can loop that place it exactly where you want in the song uh, and and um, have it coming in on whatever bar you want and have it looped or have it running for as long as you want so really good stuff so we're going to come out of that now and give it a try because I've, I've never actually used this before in any of my projects um so i'm not quite sure how this is going to work but let's come out and give it a uh, it's just confirming here the loop is on for track one its position is uh at the top of bar two and it runs for four bars okay so let's come out of that um and if i turn loop off here on the track menu then the track will behave as normal. But if I put loop on, it will apply those loop settings. And the pad behavior here is currently set to gate. So it will it will play when I um, hold down the, uh, the pad, uh, or I can set that to one shot, or what's the other one, repeat. Okay, so we'll just have a, have a go with this. I'll actually experiment with you during the making of this video, because 
uh, we can we can uh, line it up using the track sequence so that loop that we've just created but let's see what happens if we hit play So we obviously need to line that up using the track sequencer. So if we go into track and hit sequencer there, we can uh, hit record and drop in, um, drop in. Yeah, that's just dropped in, dropped in the loop to the track sequencer there. That's dropped the whole thing in. So you'll have to play around, <laughs> I said I'm no expert on this, but you'll have to play around with that and uh, you can, you can um, sequence then uh, a series of loops and build up a song uh, if you're into that sort of loop based production approach, which uh, as you've probably gathered by now, I'm not. So you can, uh, you can have some fun and experiment and play around with that to your heart's content. And if you want to leave in the comments section some tips and tricks for others who might be watching this about how it all works. Uh, then uh, I would also appreciate that, um, just in case you ever do decide to go down that road uh, at some future point. Right, folks, um, I'm going to stop the video there because um, this has probably been one of my longest videos so far when I look at this back. And um, as I said during the intro, it's an area of the R24 I'm least comfortable with that I use the least. Uh, and in the case of the um, loop thing there at the end, I've never used before. Uh, but it will hopefully give you, it hopefully won't confuse you too much and it will hopefully give you uh, an overview of the use of rhythms and loops and, and drum patterns on the R24. As you can see it's incredibly powerful and, and there's a lot there to be explored and, uh, and experimented with. Um, the, way, the way I think this makes most sense to me is, um, is to think of uh, having to build your uh, rhythm track if you don't have a real drummer and you want to do it all on the R24, then to build your rhythm track uh, bit by bit. So make your bricks, first of all, make your little uh, two bar or four bar rhythm parts, your fills, your intro, whatever, and then use those bricks that you've created to build your wall in the track sequencer, line them up in the order that you want them, have them behaving in the way that you want them using a, uh, uh, the settings menu and also a combination of step input or real-time recording input mode uh, and then when you've done all of that make sure the track sequencer is engaged here with this toggle switch from the home screen uh, don't leave it on when you finish using it because that will make the thing behave um, in a manner that you're not expecting and it might confuse you for a while like it did with me earlier on uh, and then play back all your rhythm uh, patterns and your loops from the track sequencer and maybe think about bouncing them down to a single pair of stereo tracks, which you can then use in your project along with all your other tracks of instruments, guitars, bass, vocal, whatever, uh, to, uh, to build your entire song. Um, that, that loop idea, for example, I think, I think that could come in quite handy when you're looking at um, you know, a bass line, a repeating guitar riff or something like that. You only need to play it once uh, for, uh, you know, for a couple of bars and then loop it um, and have it coming on, on and off in the bits of the song where it should be, uh, and then you've got the, you know, the whole, the whole track built up then. So there you go, folks. I hope that's been useful. Um, apologies, as I said, if it's been confusing in any way or uh, not as clear um, and concise as my usual stuff. Um, I've, I have found this particularly difficult and particularly challenging to put together. Uh, but I was getting that many requests from different people that uh, I kind of couldn't put it off any longer and uh, had to uh, had to get it done. So I um, hope it's useful, folks. And uh, as always, I'll put quick links in the bottom of the video description so you can go straight to the bit that that's interests you and that uh, if you want to keep coming back to the video as a reference, you know you, you know where to go to go straight to the part that you need to access at any point in time. Uh, and I always say this, but if uh, you uh, liked this, then please click the like button. Uh, if you um, uh, if you like what I'm doing with the R24 and the tutorial videos, then uh, I always appreciate a subscription. So subscribe, please. Uh, and finally, and you'll see from all of my videos that uh, if you leave me comments in the comments section below, I will always try. Uh, and answer you and always try and answer you normally within a week 
Uh, the only time I don't manage that is when I'm working away from home and I have limited internet access. So uh, if uh, if I go quiet on you, then uh, just just thanks a lot for your support. And uh, that's me over and out for now. I'm not sure what the next video on the R24 will involve. Maybe that's the lot done now, or I might do a mop up session at the end with um, uh, with some things that I haven't yet covered. But I think I've covered just about everything. Okay, folks. Bye for now, and uh, speak soon. Stay safe.